Hi, and welcome to Becoming Less, an Edmontonian journey to less waste, less impact, less consumption, and less clutter. Becoming Less is brought to you by Waste Free Edmonton, and together we're dedicated to waste reduction efforts, both big and small. I'm Biz. I'm Emily, and today we are going to talk about how Canada stacks up in terms of our waste and why it matters. So, Biz, would you like to break the news to our listeners? Guess what, everyone? <laughs> Canadians suck. <laughs> well, just at least when it comes to waste production. Yeah. We are the number one waste producers per capita. That's us. Yay, we win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so this is measured in like basically kilograms. So there's different ways of measuring it. But essentially, uh, like our municipal waste per capita, we have the heaviest amount of waste by quite a bit. Like we beat out the United States, like similar countries like Australia, Germany, New Zealand, like we are way ahead of them, um, which is a little bit of a bummer really i i like i definitely thought that we might be a little bit better than the united states yeah i, I guess that was my hope be better than the states too but nope turns out we're not not per capita right i mean obviously the states makes more overall but that's because they have way more people right so i guess that is like one interesting thing to think about is that um, obviously canada doesn't have near as many people as the united states and so Yeah, while overall we don't produce as much waste as a lot of these other countries, still per person we are creating like quite a bit of waste. And in all the studies, like everything that we looked at, all the research that we saw, Canada always wins. (laughs) Well, loses, really. All the studies (laughs) say the same thing. Canada is the top. Now, that hasn't always been the case. In the 90s, we were third behind the States and Australia. But okay. according to the Conference Board of Canada, as of 2002, we took number one. Yeah, we took the lead. Yeah, which is kind of a bummer. So what does that mean? I mean, that really means that literally our garbage trucks have to pick up more waste than like in any other country per week. I don't know, which is in my mind, like one of my favorite things about waste and why people should care about it is that it is a cost, right? Like it costs money to have a garbage truck pick up your waste. Like from an economic standpoint, everyone wants to save money and like reduce their expenses, right? So that's kind of like one of my favorite things to talk about to waste because even if you don't really care about the environment or you're not really interested in like the sustainability route, you probably still want to save money, right? (laughs) <laughs> that's one thing that has come up with the cart rollout over and over again is people are like outraged that's going to cost so much but actually it only goes up a tiny bit and only if you get the big cart if you opted for the small cart you actually save a little bit well my understanding is that like the difference between the big cart and the small cart is like four dollars a month or something like it's not a huge substantial amount but yeah the carts obviously the cost for like rolling out something like this on this big of a scale is going to be expensive, but we're going to reap those benefits like, you know, continuously over the next 15 years or or the lifetime kind of of this system. But I do like that they tried to kind of give a little break to those people who opted for the small cart, which means that they are limiting the amount of garbage to a smaller amount. Yeah, totally. And yeah, and I mean, those carts are still pretty big. Like, I, what are they? It's 60 liters instead of 120 liters. Yeah, it's still pretty big. Definitely. Like a human being can easily fit inside the small cart. Yeah, just in case you're like wanting to throw out your bodies. (laughs) But just kidding. You can put animal remains in the compost. (laughs) In the food scraps cart. In the food scraps cart. (laughs) Yes, you can put your dead bodies in the food scraps cart. You heard it from this first. So if you're murdering people, (laughs) we don't condone murder. Okay, this got weird. (laughs) Um... Yeah. Anyway, so okay, back to back to waste in Canada. <laughs> why <laughs> we got a little off track there. Okay, so why do we think why why do you think this is biz? Okay, well like, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. I did see that there is evidence that it's basically lifestyle creep. For those of you who don't don't know what that means, that means as your income increases, so does your consumption. <laughs> 
Yeah. So this is really based, like, it, it's linked to GDP, correct? Or, like, there's a statistically significant... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as overall income increases, that lifestyle creep for everyone generally increases. And so everyone is consuming more because they're making more money. Mm -hmm. And then, therefore, wasting more or creating more waste. Yeah. So it's it's mindless consumption is what it is. People tend to and convenience, right? live beyond their means, usually. <laughs> but they tend to live at least, you know, with like they that it has the goldfish effect, right? So uh, your income gets bigger, your bowl gets bigger, the goldfish grows, your spending grows, right? Right. And so, I mean, you didn't need it when you made less money. Why do you need it now? They make more money. So it's it's a lot of mindless consumption and it's just people have more money so they spend more money and they buy more things therefore mm -hmm. they have to throw more things away yeah exactly which is so interesting and i think that like part of it too is that so in comparison uh i guess like you know japan is always seen as like the top performer japan like per capita they don't produce a lot of waste per capita and I think about just about how our countries are so different. So I know in Japan, like obviously space is a really big issue and like actually just having a place to dispose of your waste. So like they don't have the room for landfills for disposing of their waste like we do in Canada. In Canada, because we're, you know, this really big, vast country where we have more square kilometers per capita than I think almost any country in the world, um, we just have the availability as well to kind of like out of sight, out of mind, the garbage that we have. And so I think that that is probably also part of it is that our mindset, because we live in such a, a vast country with lots of space, is that there's this idea that we can also get rid of our garbage really easily because we have the space to put it in landfills. Like we're never going to rent. Well, I shouldn't say never, but like we have the space for landfills. Is that like the best solution? I don't think so. But um, we have that space. So a lot of the time we just put it in the landfill without it's even thinking about an it. an easy solution. You know, it's like the, the standard easiest thing to do mm -hmm. with the garbage is just pile it up somewhere outside of a city and not think about it anymore. Yeah, it's convenient, right? Like, even if you think about, so in Japan, you really have to sort your waste. You can look this up if you just go on the internet, basically anywhere. In Japan, like, it is really, they have much more strict sorting requirements. Um, I think that they have to organize them. It depends, obviously, on where you live. But my understanding is that you have to separate your waste into, like, 17 different sorting options. Wow, 17. Yeah, like it, it's quite a large number. So you're really, really combing through your waste all the time. And then I think there's a bit more of like an enforcement policy with that as well. So if you're not doing it correctly, then like you will get fined and there will be punishment. Whereas in Edmonton, actually, like, you know, there was a bylaw that you could only before the cart rollout, I believe that there was a bylaw that you could only put out like three black garbage bags full or something like that. Like they had they did have limits, but those weren't actually enforced. So no, my like my neighbors will put out like eight garbage bags in a week. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So so even though there's rules, they're not being enforced um, and there isn't there wasn't the capacity in in Edmonton at that time to like do the engagement or enforcement of that from a bylaw perspective, which now with the cart system, um, actually, that will change a lot because basically if you're garbage lid so obviously the carts have like those swinging lids on them if your lid can't close um or if it's like propped open or whatever then my understanding is is that you will actually get a notice and that you'll kind of be flagged like the first time and then i think the second time maybe they won't even pick up your garbage yeah they have these little tags that they'll put on the cart yeah so yeah. there's a bit more of a regimented system of like enforcement and i don't know if there's going to be fining or anything like that but i i do know that 
there's going to be more of a push for like education and flagging specific people who maybe aren't following the said rules of like having your cart closed because that also like messes with efficiencies and things like that like on the other side of things if Mm -hmm. you're looking from a waste collection perspective and so yeah so this cart the new cart rollout in Edmonton will allow for that system to be enforced a little bit more which I think is interesting whereas with yeah setting out your garbage bags like it's kind of hard I don't know like even if you just think about the difference in garbage bags that you could have like oh they are only allowing three garbage black garbage bags or something but if you have like huge industrial garbage bags that's going to look a lot different or like your waste is going to look a lot different than the smaller garbage bags or like you know there's just so much variability in that whereas with the cart you have this really standardized system that we can work with and kind of educate specifically to and so i do think that even just this switchover is going to I guess, allow a little bit more, more opportunities for education and learning, whereas people would just put their garbage out, right? Most households in Edmonton could cut their garbage in half by composting and leaving their lawn clippings on the lawn. Oh, yeah. Well, that, okay. So (laughs) that's another actual statistic um, is that food waste in Edmonton, well, and in Canada, I'll say, basically from general research that I've done, it's something like 58% of people's waste that goes to the landfill is actually just like kitchen waste which is shocking. And and food waste is also really heavy too. So you, if you think about how, you know, waste, like how we mentioned before that a lot of the time it's it's measured in kilograms per capita, your food waste actually weighs a lot. <laughs> and that's going to be like the really heavy carbon rich things. And so, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see with the cart rollout, hopefully if people start using that, how much the waste basically how much that's going to transform what our waste looks like and what's actually going to the landfill. I think a lot of people will be shocked when when they see how empty their black bins are because their food scrap yeah. bins are taking up so much of what they used to throw in their general garbage. Oh, totally. Well, and the other thing too that probably people don't really know um, is that your your garbage is kind of like roughly sorted. Like now when you put your garbage bag in or whatever and it goes in the garbage truck and they take it. It is sorted at the Edmonton Waste Management Center, like roughly, and it's mostly mechanically, whereas recycling is like sorted by hand a lot. I would say that, you know, it is kind of roughly sorted. So they like try to kind of take out the organic material through a machine that kind of like spins your waste so that the heavy stuff gets like pulled out farthest. Like if you think about that... And you think about, okay, so you have like this organic material that's weighing things down and also it's like really polluting and kind of damaging some of this other garbage that like wouldn't be as gross or damaged or whatever. So there would be or hopefully there'll be potential to like use and hopefully divert more waste that's going to the landfill because even on like the waste management side, you might be able to like use that waste as more of a resource because it's not going to be as polluted or impacted as much by like organic food scraps. So it'll be really interesting to see, I guess, how this different cart system really like transforms the waste in Edmonton and what it looks like from a waste management perspective. But that's just me getting all like waste management-y because obviously (laughs) I've worked in that area, so it's really interesting to me. But once again, out of sight, out of mind for a lot of people. So they're like, we're just ready to not have to look at our garbage. (laughs) Oh man, I wish people had to see look at their garbage yeah, i just wish they had to stare at it forever <laughs> that's why everyone should do trash audits like we talked about the other week <laughs> okay so i know that you probably have like an explosion of reasons why we care about reducing our waste so why do we want like environmentally you've already talked about financially that helps what else oh my goodness okay yeah so Obviously, economically, that's like my favorite go-to because everyone wants to save money. The next one is that landfilling while like, you know, landfilling is kind of the, I don't know, the appropriate, I guess, measure to deal with waste in Canada. Like landfilling actually sucks. Like I don't don't really know how to describe it any better than that. But, you know, things actually don't break down in the landfill. They're also like basically these like horrible toxic cesspools obviously landfills are like managed 
a lot differently than they were in the past. So it's not like you're just dumping garbage into a pit. Like there's a lot more science and stuff that goes on behind it. That is the technical difference between a dump (laughs) and a landfill is that a landfill is managed and a dump is literally just a big hole that people put their garbage into. Right. Like I don't, we don't really have dumps we don't have dumps anymore that's not really a thing it's illegal now (laughs) yeah but at the same time like i don't know i think about obviously right now a hot topic is like open pit mining in southern alberta and i'm like you know what is like kind of similar to like the complete destruction (laughs) of an ecosystem is like putting a landfill in it like maybe not quite to the same extent because you're not extracting the same amount of things but like no you're just throwing poisonous items and do it <laughs> that's <laughs> well, better <laughs> you know and you know i get this out of sight out of mind like people don't have to think about their waste but i think that for in general people can kind of all agree that like having plastics and chemicals and actually things that we don't even really know what they are because you can put whatever you want in your garbage and they'll take it to the waste management center and even though it gets processed like it's probably going to go into the landfill it's just like an unknown chemical. Like, it's just not a good thing. I don't know. I'm obviously not on board for landfills. Do I think that there's a better solution? Uh, I don't know. Like, not making garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're right. That's a better solution. Sorry. I sh- you're right. That's 100%. I was thinking more like incineration or like some of those other like garbage <laughs> disposal things, but obviously not making garbage in the first place is definitely the best, the best thing. So I think that in just in general, like it's really bad for the environment, even, even for us, like I'm not an expert on this by any means. And I haven't done any research on this up to this point, but you know, the amount of like microplastics that we're finding in both our like animals bodies bodies and our own bodies. I think that that's also really interesting. So it's kind of directly like the waste that is in our environment is also directly impacting our health. I read somewhere recently that they found microplastics in placentas now. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Like, so your unborn baby is the nutrients that your baby is getting before they're even born. Oh, it's just it hurts. Yeah. I think that, you know, once again, out out of sight, out of mind, like we we think that, you know, landfilling and throwing our stuff in the garbage is a solution. But I really think that over time, this it's waste isn't going to go away. Like this issue isn't going to go away. It's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be toxic landfills that we have to deal with. You know, we might have to reclaim those like who knows what's going to happen and the research that's going to be created in the next or information that's going to be discovered in the next how many years that like, oh, maybe burying your waste is like not a great thing and what we should do about that and how it's impacting our water systems. And I think that in general, continuing to do as we've been doing isn't going to be a solution because it's going to impact us more and more. Yeah, I um, think it would be so much nicer to have like healthy land for growing food than poisoned and toxic land for throwing a bunch of stuff that we don't need anymore. Yeah, especially for landfills. Like I also kind of want to stress that like, you know, landfills aren't just full or or they are full of like household waste, but they also have commercial waste in them. And so what is even in landfills is really unknown. Basically, landfills are like created. We dump a bunch of stuff in them. We layer them. We compact them and then we seal them up and like they have methane vents and they're monitored and all that kind of stuff. But what happens when... I don't know, when we need to do something with those or that land base needs to be changed or or anything like that. Like it's quite dangerous to kind of mess with landfills after they've been closed. And so, yeah, I think that that's another thing that we really have to consider is that we're kind of it's unknown. Like we don't really know what (laughs) is going to happen with these landfills because we haven't had them long enough. Like in Canada, we don't need the space right now, but, you know, there might come a time when we need something or we need that space or it makes sense to develop that. And then we kind of have this area or this landmass that's full of like an unknown. It's it's unknown. We don't know what's in there and it could be really dangerous. It could be safe, but it also could be really dangerous. And I think that that's that's something to think about as well. And you touched on this briefly, but landfills are like great at producing methane, which is... Yeah. Is is a very bad thing. <laughs> it's a greenhouse gas. <laughs> yeah. And methane 
although it recovers faster than CO2, it also is way harsher than CO2 in the short term. Yeah, so so the landfill in Edmonton is actually like full. It has been like closed off. And then they actually were producing electricity with the methane there. So I don't exactly know the science behind it, but basically they were using that and generate generating electricity and like providing that to the city of Edmonton um, to power homes. Yeah, but I still don't think that makes everything go like it doesn't take all of the emissions away. Oh, definitely not. No, I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. So I, I just know that that is a kind of a cool thing that happened in Edmonton where they were able to capture that methane. But at the same time, like you're still having a landfill that's still producing methane. And actually now in Edmonton, like all of our garbage isn't dealt with locally. We send it to Riley. Like we truck it um, and we send it to a different landfill. Like, even think about that, how many trucks are going to Riley every day just to... Yeah, and using fossil fuels to get there. Right, because we don't have a local um, solution. Like, we don't have a local landfill for our city's waste anymore, so we're outsourcing it. Yeah, when you think about even, like, that carbon footprint and then also the carbon footprint of, you know, the landfill in itself and methane and the other gases that you have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, landfills just like aren't a great thing. So <laughs> it's not ideal. But I mean, you're right. Like, I don't, I don't know. But really, the best thing is just to not produce the, wa the waste in the first place. That, yeah, that's really the only solution. And waste is increasing. Like, we're producing more and more waste than ever before, which is also like quite staggering. Yeah, it's still going up, even though more and more, they, it seems like there's more and more awareness, right? But we're still increasing our waste production. So what's that about? Yeah. <laughs> and that's really interesting. Like, I think I will just like briefly kind of touch on Alberta and like there, there has been kind of a push, I guess, for this idea of, you know, basically organizations being organizations who produce the packaging to be more responsible for their own their own waste or the waste that's produced from them um, or for their from their products. And so that's called extender producer responsibility. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of also an interesting thing to think about. And I don't know what the answer for that is either. But basically this idea that, yeah, we have products that we're producing more and more waste. We have packaging. Things are becoming more packaged. And, you know, the, the push for extended producer responsibility is basically to have organizations relook at their packaging to ensure that they're, like, more recyclable and that, like basically the cost of recycling that packaging or, or things like that is built in or like the company is responsible for that. That's like a little bit of a dicey area to navigate because I I do feel like in a lot of instances, it's that cost is still like kind of put onto the consumers. But yeah, we keep on producing like more and more things. On that and note, I yeah. recently, and I feel like I probably should have heard about this sooner, but I've recently heard that Ikea is trying really hard to do that even before they had to. Oh, yeah. Well, to be honest, it's it's also like it's a marketing, right? Like, I don't know anything about what IKEA is doing. But um, I do think that, yeah, if you do have extended producer responsibility, in a sense, like that is, in my mind, I would think of that as like a good marketing strategy to be like, we're taking initiative, we're doing this. And so, yeah, yeah I think that there's sure. a demand. But there's also a demand from that for, from consumers, right? Especially a place like Ikea, which is like the fast food of furniture, I guess. <laughs> um, it's questionable, right? But they are making a lot of their plastic furniture out of recycled plastics. Now, that being mm -hmm. said, my research never saw the word post-consumer anywhere. So mm -hmm. buyer beware of that. But um, yeah, the one thing that I did find kind of cool is that if you have IKEA furniture that you don't want anymore, that's broken, whatever, they'll take it back and they'll deal with it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That is cool. So that was, I mean, of all the things, like they're like, oh yeah, our cotton and our wood is all sustainably harvested and, and mm -hmm. we use bamboo because it's really quick turnaround and we not, they don't use bamboo fabric because that is not good. They use bamboo wood, which is renewable resource. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Bamboo fabric, bad. Bamboo wood is okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, the recycled bottles, no post-consumer. But the fact that they will take any of their 
furniture pieces are broken they'll take it back that's cool and you can get any piece of furniture replaced just the single piece of it i do like that about ikea i will say that like (laughs) i mean they definitely need uh replacements for a lot of their pieces because like ikea furniture also breaks super (laughs) easily but that is really nice like for example i i've totally broken actually my partner like broke a piece on our bed and so we had to go in and like buy that piece from our bed or for our bed and because it's standard like across all of their models it was like super easy and right it was like very painless i guess to kind of get that yeah so the convenience factor was there as well their stuff being modular anyway this is not an ikea Mm -hmm. like promo (laughs) (laughs) it was just an interesting tidbit about post consumer responsibility for their packaging yeah Um, Yeah, which which is interesting. So, I mean, in Alberta specifically, I think that extended producer responsibility, like, it's kind of in the works right now, and I think it's exciting. I think that we shouldn't maybe get too excited about it because I feel like it – I don't know specifically if, you know, what our policy is going to lay out initially is going to, like, solve the problem or anything, but I do think that it's um, it's kind of like the first step in looking at our waste and how to reduce it and why it's important and why it matters. And I know for extended producer responsibility, actually, like, if you look at the reports, a lot of their focus is basically on the idea that this there's this huge recycling economic market that we're missing out on. And so, you know, we're producing products that are basically going to landfill, that it's costing us money to put to the landfill, whereas we should be producing products that we can effectively recycle to improve our recycling industry. That That's basically just like a tidbit, I guess, of kind of the whole thing. But um, like yeah. at the end of the day, it does kind of also come back to dollars and cents and job creation. And like there's a whole bunch of other reasons why, you know, it makes sense to reduce our waste going to landfill because like it's extremely costly <laughs> and it's mean, not economic. Most plastics are recyclable, but they're not going to get recycled oh. unless somebody is going to buy them. So... That's that's the kicker. It's not it's not that they aren't. I don't know if most plastics are recyclable. I might I might catch you there. Hey, I heard that from Rodney's mouth. (laughs) If they're if they're in the correct form, I'll say right. Like if they're fundamentally, yes, I agree. Probably plastics are recyclable, but the way that we have them in our packaging and our and our systems, they're not really like no. our systems aren't really set yeah. up for that. What makes them so, not recyclable yeah. is that it costs more than just making them new a lot of the mm-hmm. time. Is mostly yeah. is the barrier most cases. Yeah, exactly. Because to be honest, when I first started, like I remember being like, I hate plastic. Plastic is the worst. And actually, like plastic isn't really the problem. It's more so the fact that we are not like we're just using plastics and then throwing them in the garbage (laughs) whereas it's our mindset it's It's this extremely durable yeah like it's actually this extremely durable incredible resource that we can turn into essentially whatever we want it's really amazing if you think about it but the way that our systems are set up is to just dispose of it and have it as like single use or you know it breaks and oh it just goes in the garbage like actually plastic isn't the problem it's how we deal with it that's the problem yeah I I think that that's really interesting as well like I used to really hate plastic (laughs) and now I'm much more on board for plastic, but I want plastic to be in a form that doesn't have, like, that's part of a circular economy and isn't just an end of life. Yeah. It's it's literally just our to mindset a limit, about obviously. it. If we considered it mm-hmm. a valuable, like, if we just gave it more value than the dollar, then it would find its way, right? Mm-hmm. But because somebody invented this durable, sanitary, mostly cheap (laughs) material everyone's like Mm -hmm. "Eh, i can afford to get a new one just throw it out no big deal but Mm -hmm. there's so much more to it than that there's a cost beyond the dollar Mm -hmm. oh definitely yeah that's social um or like environmental or like other economic i mean i guess it's not like a solid dollar that you can actually measure but yeah that has to be considered for sure in the 
reproduction and recycling and things like that of plastic. But right now, it's still cheaper to produce a new thing than to recover and recycle said old thing. And that is a bummer. It's a total bummer. It is a big to bummer. To say the least. And on that bombshell, are we ready for wine, cheese, and dessert? Okay, Biz, what's your wine, cheese, and dessert? Okay, <laughs> so as... I'm not even sure if I've mentioned I'm doing the MCR, the Master Composter Recycler Training. Woo woo. woo, woo. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned that or not. I but... don't know if I've mm. talked about it, which is amazing that I've made it this far. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm mildly disappointed that I'm wish cycling more than I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> oh, yeah. The recycling class is a fun bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly Mm -hmm. clamshells and like plastic packaging, like the clear hard plastic that you find in packaging. Mm -hmm. I always thought that that was recyclable. Mm -hmm. And apparently it used to be, but the market's gone. So now it's not. Okay, interesting. Okay, and so did they t- did they touch on clamshells? Because I know that that has been a contentious one in the city of Edmonton recycling. <laughs> yeah, I think officially they say you can put it in there, but what's yeah. happening is it's just getting thrown out because nobody's buying it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Like a lot of these things, you're like, oh, perfect, that's recyclable, great, but it's actually just getting sorted out at the depot and getting div diverted to the landfill in this case yeah and not because it's not recyclable (laughs) but because nobody wants to recycle it yeah because products basically are are only as valuable as the people who need them to make other things Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like any resource so yeah okay so that's your wine yeah we're cycling that is a bummer okay what's your cheese my cheese is what is the difference between a poorly dressed man on a tricycle and a well dressed man on a bicycle. I have no idea. A tire. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's a lovely pun. Yes. <laughs> and and well, I know that you probably thought of this because you've just been enjoying biking so much. Well, because it's a lovely it's day finally... for cycling today. Yep. Yeah. I was gonna say it's cycling season, kids. Get out your bikes, tune them up. Go to everything bike Edmonton to and get a used bike if you don't already have one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited. I went for a bike ride, like, in, oh, it was way too early for a bike ride. Like, I was super excited because it was, like, I don't know, maybe this was, like, a month ago, and I went for a bike ride, and it was a complete mistake because as soon as I, like, got off the bike lanes, it was, like, ice and snow and it was horrible conditions so obviously now it's a month later and now i'm ready to go again and my bike is ready to go so i'm very excited (laughs) but i was i I hit it out of the gate a little too early i actually don't find ice too too bad unless i'm going around corners but like straight not too bad it's like the slushy snow that i find the worst oh yeah if you get a dump and it's like around the zero mark and you're like, oh, oh that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, this was, I went for a bike ride right when it was like everything was thawing, but like a lot of the streets that hadn't, that like don't get plowed consistently were still like super icy. So it was like, oh, I was biking on a layer, like a three inch thick layer of ice with like one inch of slush on it. Oh yeah. And it was just that's like, hard. that's hard to do. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. But um, okay. yeah, spring has sprung and I'm very excited for biking season. Okay, so my dessert is that I have convinced my boss that he goes to the recycling depot to take the cardboard in. So mm-hmm. now we're getting bins for all the other things that can go to the recycling depot. Ooh, and then he like will plastic take... and glass and Yeah, bags. so all of those things oh, that a lot awesome. of the staff have for lunches so like if someone brings soup for lunch their soup can can go in there or oh, all the nice. paper that we don't recycle we don't recycle paper at work yet soon yet oh that's crazy like, right okay well like, that's so exciting <laughs> so woo-woo. yeah oh that's so interesting yeah that's awesome that's super awesome because he's going there anyways so why not just I have know. a couple extra bins yep he perfect like, oh my goodness have, i don't want to take another stop i'm like these are all things that are at the same place you're going anyway he's like i was gonna say if he's going to the depot also because the depots they take their bins like they bypass um like the sorting facility 
So they go like straight to market. I don't know if people know that. But basically, if you take your stuff to a depot, because you're sorting it at home individually, then it's different than like the city of Edmonton waste service where you put all of your stuff in a blue bag and then your blue bag gets like ripped open and like hand sorted by people. If you take your stuff straight to a depot, then basically it like doesn't have to get resorted again, which is really cool. That is so, very cool. So there's less trucking. Yeah. There's less mm-hmm. manual labor. So less less cost so we can keep costs down and mm-hmm. you don't have to use a bag so you reduce the amount of plastic you are contributing to the system yeah exactly so depots are awesome win 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 yeah everybody wins okay cool all right well do you want to hear my wine of course i do <laughs> okay so i drink or i eat a lot of lemons i guess i don't like eat them straight but i drink a lot of lemon water and like I usually have fresh lemons in my house. And so one of these like popular, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's like a popular zero waste hack that's like, oh, if you have a lot of citrus because you're not really supposed to put a ton of citrus into your worm compost. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, I have all this citrus that like I don't really want to throw in the garbage. So I was like, okay, I'm going to like do the whole like cleaning vinegar thing. Like you're supposed to take your citrus peels and then like put them in a jar And then, like, put them in vinegar and basically, like, over time, then this vinegar becomes, like, this lovely citrusy whatever, and then you can use it for cleaning. This is my plan. Have you seen this before? I I have (laughs) heard of this. I haven't done it, but I am on the edge of my seat to hear how it went because I use a lot of limes. We we go through limes in this house. Yeah. So I was like, oh, perfect. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to like store. So I have my compost under my sink. I have a thing for eggshells under my sink. And I was like, what's another bucket? Like, (laughs) who? Why not? So then I started putting my like citrus peels in a jar underneath my sink. And yeah, basically my wine is that I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm doing something wrong because my citrus peels went like super moldy. And I think maybe it's because I wasn't, like, I was juicing my lemons and then just putting, like, the non-juiced part, I guess. Like, not the pulp or anything, but, like, I don't know, what I would think was the rind into this glass or, like, this jar. And so I did that for a little while and then they sat for, like, a week and went super moldy and were gross. And so my partner was absolutely appalled. (laughs) He was not happy. (laughs) These moldy lemons that were under... He was like, what is this? I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) That's not what I was expecting to happen. So yeah, that was a bit of a fail for me. So I don't really know. I'm guessing maybe I... Like maybe there was too much like moisture or like... So something left on them. They went bad while you had them in the bucket? Yeah, like, and it was quick too. Okay, like it was. So I think you're supposed less to less than ten them. days. Yeah, I didn't do that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think you're supposed to like dehydrate them first. Oh my god, but that seems like so much work. Oh, oh my I gosh. know. This is why I haven't done it. I tried. Oh, okay. I actually did start collecting my orange and lime peels for a while, and I did dry them out, and I was waiting yeah. to get enough. So that I could put them in alcohol so that I could get the oils. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, this is just silly. Why don't I just use vinegar? <laughs> right? Like, I, I'm I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So anyways, I like basically had this half full like quart of moldy lemon rinds that was just like absolutely disgusting. And then of course, because it's like just lemon rinds, I didn't want to just put it in my compost because then it, my worms would be unhappy. So I like put it in the garbage, which was disappointing. But I'm wondering, my wine is basically that I tried this. It didn't work. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, you missed a step. I don't know. Is there a way to avoid drying them out? Like, I don't have a dehydrator. I don't want to like put my oven on. No, no, no. I don't know. Like, all I did was just left them out. Like, I think it's because you had them in a, in a bucket. And so they didn't oh. have the airflow to dry them out. Oh. Like, they okay. dry out well, pretty maybe... quickly if you just leave them out somewhere open. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's the trick. And have them spread out so they're not, like, piled on top of each other. Okay. All right. Well, that, you know what? I obviously failed at that. So maybe I'll give it another go. It's just, where are you going to put them, right? Yeah. Like, they need to be there for a few days at least. Yeah, I guess I'll just, like, 
leave them on my counter. Right? Like, that's just awkward. To dry? I don't know. Yeah. And, and then I was thinking, I'm like, oh, what if I just had, like, a half jar of vinegar and I just, like, added my lemon peels to that as I use them? Do you want to borrow my dehydrator? No, I think I think this is what I'm going to try. Maybe okay. this is a bad idea. <laughs> if I just, like, fill up a jar or, like, not quite full and then I just add my lemon peels to that so that they'll be submerged in the vinegar and then I don't think they'll mold. They won't mold if you draw them first and then put them in vinegar. But I don't think they'll mold if they're in the vinegar. It'll be like pickling, kind of. Uh, right? Yeah. They would, I don't they know. would pickle, anyways. I guess. Right? Yeah. I don't, anyways. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to look into it more. <laughs> this seems weird. Yeah. Anyways, that was my total fail of the week. And sorry to my partner who had to deal with like disgusting moldy lemon peels because that was my bad um and so okay and so so i'm going off of like food waste our new cart system and so biz i just have to ask how much food would a food truck chuck if a food truck could chuck food <laughs> say that 10 times fast that's my do you have the response <laughs> to that as well no, I don't. But I'm guessing it would be about 58% of uh, all of your food waste that Canadians have <laughs> in their garbage would be would be checked. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> if um yeah. <laughs> so anyways, and <laughs> that's my cheese. And my dessert is that this week, so I guess I'm just like on the theme of like saving all my food waste, but I made chicken broth, which I was super excited for today. Ooh. Yeah, so this, I, I made like a roast chicken uh, yesterday, I guess, or maybe two days ago. And then this is like a super easy thing to do. Totally more people should do it because it literally took zero effort where I literally just took like all the chicken bones or everything that was like left over that we we wouldn't eat from the chicken, the whole chicken, and like throw it in a crock pot with like a carrot and celery and like a little bit of onion and I don't know, kind of whatever you have. And then I just put it in my crock pot on high overnight and then like voila you have delicious chicken broth which is like the best to have so yeah so that was that was my fun afternoon i guess so one well, DIY it didn't even take me an afternoon and one yeah. diy yay Woo. <sighs> yeah 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 totally diy yay people should totally make more of their own broth because it's so easy it's literally like mindless. All you have to do is throw things in a crock pot and leave it overnight and then you're good to go. I think the celery and onion is, is quite important though. You need to, you need uh, yeah, I would definitely add. And I add like, honestly, I add like the the remnants of my veggies yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, like you just need the base and like the leafy parts of the celery and you need the, the parts you chop off of your onion and the carrot tops. Like you don't need the good parts that you're going to eat anyway. Yeah, like there's, to be honest, I was like looking online to see what the preference is for like, oh, should you add like, because I was, I added like garlic and stuff and I had some garlic cloves that were kind of getting dried out and I was like, can you just throw like the whole thing in there? So I don't know exactly. I still feel weird about like throwing the entire like garlic clove with all like the papery wisps or whatever, but I guess you can. Like, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to just throw that in there. You but. stitch it all out after anyway. Yeah. Oh, totally. I don't know. I, I've heard that like some of the, like the papery stuff can be a little bit bitter. So I guess it kind of depends on your preference. But honestly, you can use like the absolute scraps of your veggies and uh, you can make a really tasty, flavorful stock um, instead of buying stuff in like unnecessary packaging. And it's delicious. <laughs> well, that's exciting. So have you had the soup yet? Like, have you made... No, usually, honestly, I just I uh, I have the broth and I'm just going to throw it in the freezer. And the next time I make soup, I'll just use that instead of like buying broth or kind of soup season. Like I probably won't. I don't make soup that often in the spring, summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Although I did start making dill pickle soup also because my sister was like appalled that I wasn't using the dill pickle brine <laughs> i think i maybe mentioned that before but uh yeah so i think i'll probably make dill pickle soup at some point Marianne? with my chicken broth yes my chicken broth and my uh <laughs> dill pickle brine and nothing will go to waste anymore for <laughs> people who are just tuning in marianne has had a couple episodes with us so we know all about how hardcore marianne has been in the past <laughs> Yes, and her trials and tribulations of a zero-waste lifestyle 
Yeah. <laughs> I encourage you to listen to those episodes so that you learn what not to do, <laughs> basically. Oh, those were good. I enjoyed listening to those. Possibly because <laughs> I didn't have to do any work to record them. <laughs> Oh, it was honestly an absolute, an absolute treat. Marianne's always, always a good person to talk to about hilarious zero waste DIY things. So, all right. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all so much for listening. We would love to hear your feedback. So please send us an email at becominglesspod at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at becominglesspod, where we are the most active in our social media, but you can find all the ways to connect and listen at wastefree.ca slash becoming less pod. You heard that right. That is slightly different than the normal site we give you at the end of the show, but that is where you're going to find all of our links from now on. Yes, we've got a new page up on the Waste Free Edmonton website um, that is going to be new and improved. So yeah, you can check out all of our resources there. And we also just want to give a big shout out to Change Toothpaste Tabs, which is our sponsor. They're the best. They basically cover the cost for this podcast so that Biz and I don't have to pay for the podcast out of pocket because podcasts aren't free <laughs> and we're both volunteers. So big shout out to them. Hope to have you guys back next time. And remember that every day we can be a little less than we were yesterday. It's not a witty remark. It's a cheese. <laughs> it's supposed to be bad.